2022 is upon us, the last week of August, the time for head-to-head -head playoffs, and just one month left to rack up rotisserie points. Hi, I'm Amber Wilson, and this is Fantasy Baseball Weekly here on CBSSports.com. The Yankees have been chasing the Red Sox all season long. New York has not spent one day alone in first place in the AL East. They trailed by as much as 14 and a half games in April, but after winning 15 of 20 in August, they cut that lead down to just four games with all eyes looking towards a Week 22 series in the Bronx that could make things really close. But the Yanks dropped four of six to the Angels and the Tigers in Week 21, and the Red Sox behind Tim Wakefield and others took six of seven games from the D-Rays and White Sox to build that lead back up to seven and a half games. Brandon Webb's scoreless string is over, but now Tim Wakefield is building quite an impressive one of his own. It's been 22 innings since the knuckleballer has yielded a run, stretching over his last three starts. So now it appears that the Yankees will have to take care of business on the field, but also do some scoreboard watching as they more than likely turn their focus to the wild card race. Derek Jeter will more than likely be back in the lineup against the Red Sox this week. A sore knee kept him out of Sunday's loss to the Tigers. Jeter will probably get some more time off to rest that knee, but definitely not against the Red Sox unless it gets much more serious. Derek Jeter has been struggling a tad this month, only batting 267 with a homer and eight driven in, and August will be the first month he fails to hit over 300 since August of 2006. A shortstop who is not struggling is Troy Tulowitzki of the Colorado Rockies. As a rookie, it took him a little longer to get going in 2007, but he has gotten stronger and stronger. He's in the midst of an 11-game hitting streak during which he's batted over 400 with three homers and 11 RBI, all the while adding his name to the National League Rookie of the Year discussion. Tulowitzki and the Rockies have jumped into a third-place tie in the NL with the LA Dodgers. The Dodgers led the NL West a month ago but have dropped to six and a half games out. LA's rotation has struggled from top to bottom, forcing them to sign David Wells, who earlier this month had been released by the San Diego Padres. LA has only good memories of David Wells in 2007, as they beat him both times he started against them for the Padres, and he was very steady in his first start against a potent New York Mets offense, going five innings in a 6-2 win over New York. Things might be trending up for the Dodgers rotation as it seems that Derek Lowe has turned things around. He has won back-to-back -back decisions after not winning in his previous nine outings for LA. He still remains under 500 on the year, but with a very respectable 3.47 ERA. He won his eighth game in June, but didn't notch his ninth until late August. And we welcome in senior fantasy baseball analyst Eric Mack to the program just for this reason. And Eric, what are we supposed to do with these guys that have been up and down a bit this year as we head into the playoffs now and the end of the rotisserie season? Well, this is the time of the year you dance with the one who got you here. This is There's a reason you still care about fantasy baseball right now, and it's the strategies you've employed all season. You have a veteran having a career year who might be struggling right now? Run him out there. If you played the risk pool on two-star pitchers week to week, stick with it. Use your gut. We generally say you start your studs this time of year. You drafted them. You traded for them. You picked them up for very good reasons. Let them win or lose for you this time of year. You don't want to overthink lineup changes and have your fantasy season come down to a mistake. All right, so give us an example of who you'd keep dancing with down the stretch. Well, you want people playing for things right now, like on contending teams. Andrew Jones is not only playing in a pennant race, he's also trying to make up for the worst season of his career, and he's playing for a free agent contract this winter. He has cost himself millions of dollars already, and he's banged up right now, but he's hit over 380 on his current road trip, and the Braves are going to play some crucial games and series in the coming weeks. Assuming they don't completely eliminate themselves before mid-September, Andrew Jones is a guy you want to keep active through thick and thin. He, perhaps more than anyone, has plenty to play for right now. All right, that's all well and good, Eric, but there are some teams, the fact of the matter is, that are out of the playoff race, and their management doesn't seem to care about our fantasy squads, surprisingly enough. So, you know, a perfect example of this, for example, would be Travis Hafner. A year ago, here was a guy who was in the midst of a monster fantasy baseball season, and the Tribe shut him down. What are we supposed to do with guys like that, these vets? It's hard to keep them when they're, you know, it's hard to keep them dancing when their tap shoes are about to be taken away in the last right. month of the season. Right. The, anyone on a non-contending team is a candidate to be shut down or bench to get a look at a younger player for 2008. Barry Bonds might be one. He has the home run record out of the way. He's been through a long season, old, injury prone. He might be the case of a player that brought you to the dance, but you don't want to be dancing, dancing with him at this point. Also, some pitching rotations are going to get a huge makeover in the next few weeks. How is that going to affect fantasy lineups? Well, contending teams might be skipping their number five starters, and non-contending teams might be skipping their veterans altogether. Three teams already out of the race will be dramatically overhauling their rotations next week. The Houston Astros, Texas Rangers, and Kansas City Royals. These are bad teams with poor pitching staffs, 
but the prospects they could be going to will be intriguing options in deeper leagues, perhaps. Zach Granke was once regarded as the best pitching prospect in baseball. He's finally back starting games to the Royals, while Troy Patton in Houston, Edison Volquez, Eric Hurley, Casey Kiker, these guys in Texas, they're great young talents that could position themselves to be huge sleepers next spring. All right, thanks for the advice as always, Eric. It starts getting really interesting just about this time of year. Keep your mouth speaking right here on CBSSports.com for everything you need to know in the world of sports. And don't forget to come back Thursday for our Fantasy Baseball Weekly Planner Show. But for now, if you missed anything here today, stop, refresh, and rewatch for Eric Mack. I'm Amber Wilson. Have a good one.